Good morning. It's Sunday morning again. God is good. He has invited us into his presence and into his throne room to hear from his heart. Our thought this morning is about what the kingdom of God is like. It's chapter 13 of the book of Matthew. It's what we talked about last week when we talked about the kingdom of God as being like a seed. In today's sermon, we're going to talk about the kingdom of God as being something we can find. Something we find and something we have to give up in order to find. So let me start by sharing the scriptures that we're going to look at. It's Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, 46. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Last week when Chris and I were talking about what we were going to be talking about this Sunday, she says, well, you know, it's really interesting. I was just reading my daily bread. And the day that we were taping the other message that day it had a really interesting thing because it followed along this the thought of today and it's called costly joy so let me share with you what is written here for us at the sound of the digital melody all six of us sprang into action some slipped shoes on on others simply bolted for the door barefooted Within seconds, we were all sprinting down the driveway, chasing the ice cream truck. It was the first warm day of summer, and there was no better way to celebrate than with a cold, sweet treat. These are things we do simply because of the joy it brings us, not out of discipline or obligation. In the pair of parables found in Matthew 13, 44, 46, the emphasis is on selling everything to gain something else. We might think the stories are about sacrifice, but that's not the point. In fact, the first story declares that it is joy that led the man to sell everything and buy the field. Joy drives change, not guilt or duty. Jesus isn't one segment of our lives. His claim on us are total. Both men in the stories sold all. But here's the best part. The result of this selling of everything is actually gain. We may not have guessed that. Isn't the Christian life about taking up your cross? Yes, it is. But when we die, we live. When we lose our life, we find it. When we sell all, we gain the greatest treasure, Jesus. Joy is the reason. Surrender is the response. The treasure of knowing Jesus is the reward. I think I kind of like that story because it sums up basically what's being talked about here. I think it's something that we need to contemplate and think about a little bit. What is it we're giving up? Think about it a minute. When we come to Jesus Christ, there's always a transaction that has to take place. It's, it's not just a transaction, but also transformation. We become what we were one thing and we become something else. This transaction that takes place is we give up something in order to gain something else. And I think that the interesting thing for me here is, is that Jesus says that the thing we're gaining, or as he says it, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure a fine pearl, a pearl of great price. And it's in that context we need to see how what, what has happened between us and him. What is it we're giving up? I don't mind telling you that what we're giving up is nothing compared to what we gain. What are we giving up? Well, for one thing, we give up our sin. I kind of like that. We also give up our shame. The shame we have of what we are, 
what we haven't done in life, all of those things. We also give up the lack of hope. Hopelessness. We give up hopelessness. I think of myself when I think of that. How in my early days uh, before I became a believer in Christ, my world was filled with hopelessness. It was filled with a certain amount of despair. Yeah, I, I'm a very social individual and I like to be around people and I like to do things. But I think that the whole time that I was doing these things, there was an emptiness inside. An emptiness that I couldn't fill with doing. An emptiness that I couldn't fill with trying to gain. In the story, it talks about the first man, he found a treasure. But he had to find it. He had to dig for it. And I'm reminded of those verses of scripture where Jesus says to us, Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened unto you. Ask, and you will receive. There's a certain sense in which we need to be an active participant in the seeking God. Because here it says, he found the treasure. He saw who Jesus was. He saw all that Jesus could be to him. And instead of just doing nothing with it, it says he, he hid it in a sense. He went out and he literally, for the joy that was set before him, sold all he had and bought the field. Now, in buying the field, he gained something. There was this transaction that took place. He gave up, but he also gained. He gave up to gain. Have you ever thought of it in those terms? You give up to gain? I think of a story I heard a number of years ago of uh, a group of people who loved to do treasure hunting over in the UK. And they had, gotten, they had gone through some old manuscripts and stuff and they thought they had kind of found out where a bat, particular battle or a group of people had been. And so they went to the farmer and asked him if they could go and check out his field with uh, metal detecting equipment. And lo and behold, when they went through the field, sure enough, they found a cache of hidden gold and jewels and all kinds of artifacts that were became worth literally hundreds of thousands, if not multiple millions of dollars. And so it is with us. We can seek to find. We can ask to receive. We can knock so the door will be opened. But there's you have to do something about it. And I like that. But he, you know, the, 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 the reason he did it was as a response of joy. Joy. He found in Jesus joy. I think of the other story. It's about a merchant who is looking for a particular, particularly fine pearl. Like he was deliberately searching for it. That's why I talked about the seeking part. Because he was searching for it. He'd go around the world as part of his business and he would be looking for that pearl of great price. I have a feeling that that pearl of great price may not necessarily have been a white pearl. It could well have been a black pearl, which are by far the most expensive from my understanding, uh, as limited as it is, may well be worth more than a white pearl. But nonetheless, when he found it, and I can imagine the joy that he must have had in his heart of hearts when he found it. When he found it, he was willing to give up. And there was a transaction that took place. See, Jesus is that transaction. Jesus is the one that we're seeking. He's the one that can fill our hearts with everything we need. Once we were darkness, now we are light. Once we were the children of the world, and Jesus says in one place that we are children of Satan, now we have become children of God. There's this transaction 
this change that takes place. And I think it's important for us to realize that God is about being found. God is about being seen. He may be hidden, but his hiding isn't so that he can't be found but rather is so that we may understand the preciousness of what is found. And so we need to see that God is there to be found, not to be hidden. In fact, Paul talks about that again and again and again. He says the mysteries that were hidden are now exposed or open for all to see. That God in his grace and in his mercy has included us in everything he has done. And that's the pearl of great price. That's the treasure that was found. And in that treasure, we have joy and we have peace for always. So think about that this morning. The kingdom of God is like a man who went seeking. And when he found, he saw that what he found was worth the price. Was worth the price. And in giving up an old life, he received a new life. And so we are invited, as it were, into the kingdom of heaven by God saying to us, Receive the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, my son. That's the price. That, pardon me, that's the pearl of great price. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for your love and your goodness. Thank you, Lord God, that we can be motivated by joy in finding. Because God, you take away the past and all of what it involves and you bring us into a relationship with yourself. Father, we thank you for that relationship. In Jesus' name, amen.